Hey, while the hunt for the missing Malaysian airliner continues, there are growing questions about responsibility and compensation. Yes, and here to give us some legal insight into the matter are our attorneys, Midwin Charles and Justin Green. So welcome. Thank you for being here this well, morning. Thanks for having Thank us. So now the search is entering its fourth week. Is it still too early to talk about the legal aspect? I know we hit this last week. Right. It's, it's, it's really not, um, at least against Malaysia Airlines, because Malaysia Airlines is liable to the families under an international treaty called the Montreal Convention. What it is too early to talk about is whether other defendants like Boeing may be liable or, or responsible. And a court in Illinois just Friday dismissed the first filing, called it uh, essentially frivolous, not in those words. Um, so the first foray into court has, uh, has been rejected. Does this surprise you? It doesn't surprise me because I think that first foray, as Justin mentioned, is premature. What they really wanted was for everyone to sort of preserve documents. So it was more in a sense of a discovery motion. And the judge said, you know what, this is premature. We don't have any debris. We don't know, we don't even know where the plane went down. So it doesn't surprise me. It strikes me as a little mercenary. Well, let me, let me give you... It's a, a publicity stunt, right, frankly. It, well, I well mean, Midwin, this, Midwin's exactly right. And, and let me tell you, they filed on behalf of the father. The person that uh, that they actually filed on is not the father. Mm -hmm. It's a distant relative, estranged from the family. Wow. The uh, the the discovery uh, motion and and Midwin's right. A legitimate purpose of actually filing or even writing letters to a defendant is to preserve evidence. Right. This was not that. Right, but this law firm has a history, right? Yes, they have a absolutely. history of, of filing lawsuits like this. They do, to, to the extent where, and they've done this in the past, where they file these motions prematurely, and the judge said, listen, if you do this one more time, you are going to be sanctioned. Mm. But, you know, Justin and I were talking about this earlier in the makeup room, and it seems as though this law firm seems to kind of want plaintiffs that are not necessarily in America, in other countries. Really? So perhaps those plaintiffs are not really familiar with how we censure our attorneys or whatever. So for that law firm, perhaps a censure is just a walk in the park. But these, I feel terrible for, for these, these people. Families, They're yeah. targets right now, well, you know? Well, well think about this. <clears throat> you, you've lost your loved one. They were on a plane crash. And it's even worse because you don't really know what happened to right. them. So you're in a completely vulnerable situation. And then a lawyer like me or, or Midwin comes to you and you, we say, look, we have all the answers. Answers. We can bring a lawsuit. We can make Boeing, you know, pay millions of dollars, and we can get the Malaysian government to pay more attention to the search and any, anything else that they're going to tell you. And you, you want to believe. It. You exactly. want to believe. And and in the U.S., we uh, Congress, re, re, you know, uh, recognized this problem, passed a law. Lawyers cannot approach families for 45, 45 days, days after the accident. The National Transportation Safety Board is a family assistance program that really takes care of the families. But this is not in the United States, this is overseas, right. and the people they're marketing to can't even get on Google and do an, a search yeah. in English because they don't even speak English. Right. Yeah. Uh. Who will ultimately compensate the families? Well, Malaysia Airlines, for one, will definitely be found liable. Most airlines have to carry insurance, and a lot of them do for up to a billion dollars. So. Clearly, Malaysia Airlines, perhaps, we don't know yet, Boeing, and anybody else who made any part that may have been part of the crash. Wow, really? Well, yeah. I mean, you could, you could absolutely sue, because remember, Boeing makes the plane, but of course, Boeing purchases parts from various different companies. Now, this is also premature, because we don't necessarily right, know right. whether there was, in fact, a defect on the plane yeah. or anything to that yeah. regard. Uh, I, I, and this is way premature, too, in speculation. What if there is some kind of criminal activity? That doesn't really change the compensation for the not, families. Not, not for against Malaysia not Airlines. Not against Malaysia Airlines. They are, they are liable no matter what. Okay. And now, what about a statute of limitations? Does it apply in a case like this? Well, the, it's, it's interesting. Uh, technically, it's not a statute of limitations under the Montreal Convention. It's a two-year um, condition precedent, meaning um, with, after two years, you cannot bring a claim against Malaysian Airlines regardless. So uh, even, it, if they, even if they don't find anything even if they don't two find anything, years from now, two years from now the they cannot be sued. Wow. Um, wow. And, interesting. And, and the difference is a, a statute of limitation could be told. Meaning that, yes, Vidwin understands I'm being too with my baseball. <laughs> you can basically say if someone's a minor, it doesn't even start running until they're an adult. But this thing is two years and you're done. Right. Huh. You, guys should, you should go on the road together. No, I know. <laughs> yeah. Great team. Midwin Charles and Justin uh -huh. Green, thank you so much for uh, joining us today. Thank you. Thank you.